Hello, and welcome to the Monster Sanctuary Tournament Circuit. Today we're going to be casting the semi-final of the fourth tournament of Season 1, Draft. I'm Marsh. And I'm Quarter. So this match will be versus Joker and Jigomu, as you can see here. And boy howdy, these teams are pretty impressive and actually have some cool similarities between them, as we are actually going to be checking out here. We do, of course, have... a. Uh, Goblin Miner on one side there, but we also do have the Goblin Pilot as we do, do see actually phasing off against each other. Dark versus Light, shi light Shift as well, so it's going to be a pretty fun thing here. We see a lot of uh, charge synergy on Jigomu's side versus Joker, who's got big debuff energy going on here. Yeah, it's, it's pretty silly to see the mirror match of uh, two different shifted uh, pilots here. <laughs> And, oh man, we are already seeing Joker go absolutely ham with the bleed and the chill there. It is going to be starting to stack up, but at the same time, the heavy charge is just zapping through that Elbrac Lich almost immediately there, getting into its Phoenix Affinity Necromancy right there. Replenish trying to get it back up, but is that going to be enough to withstand that second volley as Miner and Beetleoid just vomit charge into that um, uh, pilot right there? Yeah, it's a, it's a very strong lineup here to just get a very strong turn one. Joker not going for the attack here, very interesting. It's interesting seeing as well how well Jigomu is able to weather some of this already due to some of the uh, things that we're seeing there. Of course, the barrier will be assisting alongside the heavy shield support in keeping away some of this uh, early attrition damage. Speaking of which, the Alpha Strike comes down again from the pilot, which had the full volatile shield there, taking down the Vasuki, bringing our uh, Stolby onto the board. And oh Big man, damage. Yep, yeah, the combination of the uh, damage over times and the uh, 59 charge stacks on the uh, dark shifted goblin pilot was actually able to take down two of Jagomu's monsters there, which I do believe is one of the things that Joker was trying to do in terms of that, like trying to angle a good, like, full wipe on the other side there, eliminating not just the uh, hard damage elements, but also some of the uh, carrying elements in terms of building that charge on uh, things like, you know, your goblin hood that's just come out and the Glowfly, which can be a real nightmare. Yeah, Glow Glowfly can have a really, really strong first turn. Uh, as long as it can get enough charge stacks, it can just absolutely devastate a team, even like team wipes. We're already seeing some horrifying damage previews here as it looks like uh, this goblin pilot is just not going to survive. But instead, we do see the Stelby get sniped instead. Uh, going for those supports again, those mass restores, those uh, good heals, uh, the full restores, those appear to be the target of Jigomu right now. Just keeping the goblin pilot alone and just ex like, you know, taking advantage of the fact that if it doesn't have anything buffing it up, it's not going to be nearly as painful. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense against particularly Joker, Joker's team as well, since uh, since he has that revive chain in the back. And since mm -hmm. Goblin Pilot doesn't have revive, he can cut it short uh, at near this, uh, before it, the revive chain can even start. Okay, Miner is getting a bit low there, and with no heals on... Um... Jigomu's side, that's going to be a little bit rough in terms of, we do see some uh, items get thrown out instead here, just trying to make sure that things stay up as the uh, fire, as the Solar Blaze gets popped for some juicy combo, followed by, of course, Goblin Hood tearing this Mokus to pieces. Yeah, even with a uh, high, like, weakness and chill stacks, it's it's still not enough to, to let um, Mokus survive here. Yup, that said, we do have the Aqua with bleed out in the back that absolutely oh, tears this board apart. Gift of Life, however, final slot of Jagomu, just showing us once again that uh, Griffonix can perform multiple separate roles on this team. We've seen it, of course, as a horrifying slow burn uh, damage dealer, but instead, right now, we are seeing this thing bring the entirety of Jagomu's backline back into existence here with its, with its ultimate. Gift of Life can be absolutely crazy for bringing back teams. It, it, it's, it's, it has such a big clutch element to it. 
You know, it definitely felt clutch there. We do still see Joker focusing the Goblin Miner there, which does make sense. We do see the p full potential start to ramp up our uh, Graphonix here already here. Goblin Hood just sort of running interference as our second position, uh, just building up that combo, getting us up to 18 combo for the Graphonix to really throw down some hard damage here as the Shred will be coming out and taking down the Stolby. That is a critical damage thing right there. We will see, of course, the uh, revive come out from Aquilet, though. So many sources of revive on Joker's team. Yeah, but it's hard to say uh, if the pilot can break through this lineup. But yeah, Miner but... is very low here, so who knows? My concern is the fact that unless the Graphonix goes down or we hit into infant stacks, it's just very much in Jagoma's favor inside this sort of particular uh, round. Uh, we do see the uh, fiery shots land in on the Goblin Hood and it does not break through the shields. Uh, the dots do, but now we are into infant stacks and I feel like things are very quickly going to heat up as the forge happens, followed by, of course, the fiery shots, which will just be taking down the Stolby once again. Featherstorm will be taking down the Auklet as well, and it's looking like this first game is Jagomu's. Yeah, no revives left. It's just, it's very much in Jagomu's favor here. And there was a very unfortunate miss on the Volatile Shield there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, anytime a Volatile Shield whips, it just feels terrible. Uh, I, I've seen far too many of those, but still, let's see if Joker can turn it around in our game too. See if that. Uh, okay, we, you get your wish. Blob. You got your wish. Oh my you God, the blob. blob is here. You get to see the crystal snail. These are both sideboarded monsters on Joker's side. We also see light shifted Vasuki, which is uh, renowned for having much better offensive stats than dark shifted. That is one of the general reasons I've seen for people picking that over dark shifted. So I'm interested in seeing if this Vasuki is going to be performing a completely different role, perhaps on this team. Uh, and some a lot of bulk here as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, the stats are definitely different. And our, the, the illustrious boy, uh, I have not seen many blobs in action at all. We will be seeing the um, heel charging, I believe, come out of that charming lad as the Ignite will be landing in onto our goblin pilot there, just getting some early bleeds. Not that many debuffs, though. That was some bad RNG there. But yeah, I, yeah. I feel like blob just gets overlooked a lot since... I mean, usually people just pick King Slime, but because of the format of draft, you, you can't just pick your monsters often. This and is King true. King Slime is, yeah, often high on the priority list, so it's very nice to see Blob out here. Well, with that, we do have a pretty reasonable support core there, but that Arachledge did take an absolute licking from the charge-oriented line lineup of Jagomu, which once again is showing us precisely how much damage it can output in very quick succession here. While we do have some bleeds on there and some wounds and the congeals are stacking, it's not quite the same as the one-two punch that we can see from the shield and charge combo that just loads Goblin Pilot up every turn here. Full potential brings that up past 50% on Volatile Shield. It will take it down. No more congeal on uh, on Joker's side anymore, so that could be pretty critical. Yeah, no, that is a great, that is a very important thing there, Marsh. Uh, the fact that we are no longer having that extra damage over time that's just, you know, all the net um, mana that you've lost is pretty rude there. Poison Eater coming out alongside the dots, taking down the Beadloid, though. Uh, it looks like, uh, once again, going for these supports has been the uh, MO of our two players there. What do you think is going to be happening right now though do we okay no we do actually see through a succession of misses uh still be having enough evade to uh not just get dunked on by that goblin pilot but oh this is getting real dicey for joker in our game too yeah stolby does survive from the debuffs and lead though which is pretty crazy here yeah i wasn't expecting that and uh turns out blob with its uh good healing passives is actually able to help with the healing wave there get start to try to stabilize but I don't know if I like those HP thresholds there, Marsh. Yeah, I'm, and there's a lot of charge stacks going around on Jagoma's mm -hmm. side here. Oh, it goes down. Yup, there goes the Stolby. We still have Crystal Snail in the back. We still have the pilot. There's still tools on Joker's side as the snail will be showing up. Oh, this, 
this high, uh, but the previews on Goblin Pilot were already pretty high, so... I don't know if any uh, Crystal Snail can even survive here. Well, it does have age stacks. That is one thing that is going to be going for it here. So if it's able, it like if it manages to live the first few turns, that can potentially start uh, steamrolling into some further uh, good stuff for it. However, I'm not liking the damage previews that I'm seeing for things like uh, the blob in the corner right there, which is looking like it's just going to melt to a thunderstorm, which honestly is looking like that. Uh, okay, no, we will be seeing the lightning slash instead. Wow. Just take down the crystal snail before anything else happens there. The damage reflect will be helping out out here in terms of some of this, but is it going to be enough? It looks like a bit long slash where there's a guaranteed KO on Vasuki. I'm pretty surprised on the decision here. Volatile Shield can mess with those damage previews. That's one of the only things I don't trust about that with group moves. Uh, we do still see, however, Poison uh, Poison Eater absolutely ruining uh, some more of Jagomu's setup there. That Vasuki has been getting his money's worth this game. That's true, but I feel like it's been spreading a lot less debuffs uh, than per usual. I mean, still, uh, those triple... Uh Monsters versus these three. We are seeing the debuffs start to make their way through here, but we've seen the Gift of Life work on Jagomu's side before, and we're already into infant stacks. Yeah, because like, it's very much in uh, Jagomu's favor here. Oh, oh wow. Hell's field does help, though, but Feather storm the blob as it looks like it's just Vasuki versus the world here, and I don't think that you can action economy where your way out of this with. No, we will be getting in. Into our friend, uh, just to bring Chris. Snail up. Yeah, it does ah, feel ambitious. But it's possible that that could be like sort of a sacrificial lamb thing. Like, get all the charge stacks off, try to get through the reflect damage, the goblin pilot vulnerable enough that you can start trying to just tear it down. But it's yeah, like a full defensive move. Sorry, you go ahead. Yeah, I, I think the previews weren't looking very good there. Oof. The downside is Jagomu is just oh. out in terms of the raw damage output and shield output. Survives, wow. Oh, yeah, no, that was a hair trigger right there. Full restore will be bringing up, of course, the uh, goblin pilot back into a safe sort of environment there, and it is sitting at 34 charge stacks, which is more than enough for it to fire off its salvo. Of course, uh, every 15, like every, every time you get above 15 charge stacks, you get into a fantastic scenario where, thanks to a passive, your magic becomes uh, gets buffed by the amount of attack that you have, which puts, which is one of the things that puts goblin pilot into such a strong position in both of these teams. Uh, the charge stacks and the shields on them, allowing Volatile Shield to pop off, is what we has seen uh, this much damage ramp out of both teams time and time again here. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, when when a Goblin Pilot gets enough charge stacks, it's pretty much a guaranteed KO on anything. As we <laughs> have been seeing here, the mass restores are starting to stabilize things here again, and we are seeing uh, basically full shields and 66 whopping charge stacks. Is this going to be enough to start cracking the nut that has been Jigomu here? As we will see a thunderstorm not met. Oh, it's so close. Oh, it's so close. I, I, I spoke too soon. If one more of those dots had hit, I think that would have just been it. As um, no, it is going to. Unfortunately, Jagomo is not whiffing his KOs here. As the goblin pilot is down, and we're out. We're uh, down to four monsters on Joker's side in this third game. 
Yeah, even without the Volatile Shield miss, it, uh, it, st it still killed even without the Volatile Shield hit. It was mm. the, the big charge stacks. Oh, that Hades, however, is certainly re uh, sort of uh, bringing things back into Joker's favor here. Uh, that was quite a critical amount of damage here. We are seeing actually uh, resort to, uh, I think we're going for, we, we saw we saw uh, Thom over either a potion or an antidote there, but it does not look like it's getting confirmed. Yeah, I, Miner is just almost completely out of mana, so it's kind of running out of options to spam Forge. Yep. <laughs> no, there's also- Oh, the miss! Oh, the miss! These evasions, 20% evade, thanks to the agility stacks that we're seeing there, is really helping Joker stay alive. I mean, I'm, I'm glad Blob will survive another day here. <laughs> I mean, it's just sit it's just straight up chilling, keeping everybody alive, living its best life. Uh, it doesn't have the same, you know, removal of debuffs uh, capacity as its uh, bigger brother, but it has been out here healing with the best of them, getting that replenish out there. As uh, we will see, thanks to the tackle, Miner will be going down. We are down to our last three on Jagomu's side. The tables have most unequivocally turned here. But yeah, but you... Sorry, yeah, we've, we've seen that uh, gift of life before, so... It, yeah. It's still anyone's game here. Yeah, that, that you took the words right out of my mouth there, Marsh. Will Joker be able to break the Graphonics that has been the last line of defense for Jagomu in these past two games? I'm not sure, but we've seen this Vasuki get up to some like terrifying business as the Poison Eater will pop Phoenix Affinity and it's already down thanks to that congeal, which was a whopping amount of damage onto that Gryphonix as well. Things are looking a lot more grim this time, but we do still have Restore on the Glowfly. We do still have some additional damage sources from Jagomu that might still keep this in his favor here, but things are no longer looking as secure as the other times there. If this Vasuki can be taken down, then we still, of course, have the revive from the Araklich as well. Yeah, it, I... Wow, okay. The debuffs don't kill anything, and then the infinity stacks are here on both sides now, so the, still anyone's game, but looking pretty good for Joker here. Yeah, I think another Poison Eater just takes down Graphonix, and then it is... Oh no, we're actually going for the second Hades here, which will be taking down all three in conjunction with the amount of debuffs that we saw as we get into our fourth game. Joker's back on the table here, folks. Looks like the same teams, but I doubt it'll be the same lineups. Well, we are still seeing Jagomu stick with the tried and true minor beetle pilot opener here, which has served him very well in the, these past few games. We see just an absolute nuke of Stolby as uh, Jagomu does wind up getting first turn here as his standard. Um, having uh, lost the previous one, getting to choose as a replenish does come out on that side. We get the fire shield as well, trying to get set up on Joker's side there. Yeah, the double volatile shield lineup. It, it I, I feel like it could work here. It, it's, it needs some setup though. So I'm not sure how long, uh, how long uh, Goblin Pilot and Snail can survive here. It does, like, obviously there's a built-in flaw in terms of your own defenses with the Volatile Shield team because you lose all of that uh, defense when you start coming up there, but it does mean that you're guaranteed a Volatile Shield next turn when Jagomu takes down one of them. I don't know whether this is layered so much as Whack-A-Mole here. Forcing your opponent into a Morton's Fork where they do not get to actually take down both of those and you can still respond next turn because it does look like we're still sniping the Beetloid. No, we actually go for a oh. barrier instead, getting that Snow Veil up on there. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, not, not about many charge stacks on Snail, so just not enough damage. No, we are seeing the difference between the charge stacks here as unfortunately, once again, Jago is just tearing this team to pieces. Uh, this, this opener is just a very difficult combo for Joker to break here. The combination, of course, the charge stacks and the very easy application of shield between these two monsters on the pilot, it's just painful. Yeah, and it, it's it just so many buffs as well. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a very strong lineup. Charge, I, buffs, everything. I have neglected this entire time to mention how quickly the combination of Beetloid and Miner through the combination of their passives and their actives have been able to get three sorcery and three glory onto pilot, which has been huge in terms of determining some of the damage of these things. Uh, triple glory is always a horrifying thing to have to stare down. And in the meantime, uh, Joker just does not have the same multi uh, ability 
uh, at his disposal there necessarily. Yeah, the the only downside to the lineup is that there's almost there's limited uh, there's, there's just limited debuff clear, but it seems to it's it seems to still just the mons uh, just survive through the debuffs. Yeah, Jagomu is basically saying here that, you know, the debuffs don't matter if I can kill you before I die to them, which is what he's been doing consistently here. That said, that Beloid's getting pretty low, and this board's been a bit more stable. Yeah, the bleed stacks really dug in there. Yep, you are not wrong. Uh, we do not have bleed out, but the congeal, once again, is one of the things here that I think has been uh, one of the biggest movers. The absence of mana on Jagomu's side has consistently been a bit of a thorn in his side uh, in this sort of mid phase. As uh, we start getting into the late game, we start seeing that first lineup start really showing its age. As uh, we do see now, the congeal actually take down all three alongside the bleeds bringing in our second lineup in its entirety on Jagomu's side in a single turn, that attrition's still going strong despite what we've said there in terms of that first momentum. Yeah, very, very crazy debuff damage there. Still though, uh, are we going to see the same sort of force that we saw previously? We do have two very strong earth monsters on Joker's side uh, in the form of the Crystal Snail and the um, Masuki in the back. Also, uh, I believe that was a protect right there. That was a protect, yeah. Okay, cool. Oof, but the Thunder Strike almost still wipes out the boy. Oh, it survives. Oh. Fortunately, it's it's easy to forget that Blob is actually another for, for, uh, source of Purify as well, so this does mean that uh, those blind stacks can get off there. Not that I'm expecting this uh, particular Rackledge to attack anytime soon, but it's just nice noting that you do still have that sort of extra source of Purify on this team. Always an important thing to have there. As, uh, yeah, no, Crystal Snail's just doing his job here. Yeah, I I feel like this Glowfly, as if, yeah, if, if Infinity st uh, stacks... There we go. Infinity starts coming in. Maybe uh, it can use an AOE move here. It's it's it's, it's anyone's game, as, as I like to say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very high. Perhaps perhaps that Araklich will attack. Who knows? Seventy six uh, charge stacks. Normally, you want to save and get that juicy shield burst online. We've seen that in some previous games with Joker, but I just don't think there's the space for it here. Like, you, you, we need all hands on deck when it comes to healing. But no, we do see a poison cloud come out. You, you had it entirely right there, Marsh, as uh, those charge stacks do get thrown out there alongside a cavalcade of debuffs that will be popping Phoenix Affinity. The first line is out for that uh, Griffonix. So now we are into our second round there. We do, of course, get a couple charge stacks from that, I believe, thanks to Griffonix's passive there. I do believe I saw that jump up. Very tough position for Joker here. I, if a blob dies, I think that's that's game. The blob does not. Oh, it survives. But we are still at a point where we are seeing. Oh, it's this is. I find it's always very grim when you get to that point where there's just two on the other side there. But the Grafonix going down as well. Oh my god, I spoke oh. way too soon. That Hades <laughs> blew Jagomu out of the water there. I did not expect that spike in damage, despite seeing Vasuki manage that the past two games. Into our final one here, I believe. Oh, um, so many debuffs, just huge damage. Definitely looking forward to it. Looks like the same lineups on uh, both Joker's and Jagoma's side here. Yeah, no, we haven't seen an overwhelming shift in terms of their uh, damage potential between them. It has worked for both players, so it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looks like the Stolby does survive the first turn. Uh, yeah, no, we are seeing that so far. Sorry, folks. Um, there we are. We, we just had a little bit of a uh, spot there that we had to deal with. Yeah, some technical uh, difficulties. <laughs> yeah, no, nope, this is a little bit unfortunate to see there because I'm not, I'm not able to necessarily give you a full live one there. Um, hold on. 
Yeah, nope, this is this is looking uh, particularly spotty inside this section. It's difficult to fully follow along, but we have not seen any KOs on either side necessarily just yet, although that has just shifted. Uh, as we are back into things there, despite that first round being a little bit spotty inside this. But uh, with that, we do see Crystal Snail just get taken out into the backyard and shot as uh, Goblin Pilot will be coming in here. We did see that Crystal Snail was integral to Joker's success last game. So losing that this early is a bit of an unfortunate blow there. Jagomu definitely assessing threats differently. differently. That's certainly a way to put it, Corey. Uh <laughs> But the Goblin Pilot on Jagoma's side just completely just nuking uh, as many mons as it can before it dies to debuffs. I mean, yeah, that's kind of what you have to do there. Uh, one thing we've definitely asserted about Joker's team is that it does put you kind of on a timer. So having the ability to uh, ramp things back there is uh, definitely a pretty powerful one. Uh, and and the, the onus certainly is on Jagomu to make those impressions before the inevitable heat death comes in the form of that horrifying Hades in the back. The uh, great number of uh, debuffs that we're seeing here in terms of the burn, the poison, the shock, all of those coming in together to do some really uh, serious bits of damage there. But it doesn't compare to the single bursts that we're seeing on Jagomu's side just yet. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting to see the back and forth on Volatile Shield. Just, there's always that chance it'll miss. It, it can turn a whole game around. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's it's also why seeing it on... Uh, it's, it's just another reason why Paul Turoff and scares the bejesus out of me. But we do see that Hades come out there as uh, that will start claiming lives on Jagomu's side. The uh, Death Knells are beginning to form there in the form of some of these, uh, some of these really... Uh, challenging stacks because we are not seeing much restore that is one other week as you said before it's uh, another serious issue with uh jagomu's side here is like you kind of just have to throw yourself at joker another miss on the volatile shield but nonetheless vasuki does go down absolutely and uh, this does mean that we are now out of damagers on joker's side which i do think will be uh setting things down there uh very unfortunate to see as uh we will get the shield burst however coming out uh we, which does bring us into the back line on jagomu's side but I, I have to say i'm still I'm, I'm still fully thinking this is in jagomu's court here uh the graphonics is precisely where it wants to be and there aren't any hard earth uh d damaging moves that are staring into the face like yes we do still have stolby which does have access to some poison elements yes raglich does have those too but that's not got the same zest behind it as a poison eater off of Asuki, as uh some of the gem moves off of crystal snail both uh, jewel volley like both of those have way more of a capacity to uh throw into the graphonics than what we've seen right now True, but with a blob and a stolby, it is possible to stack up up to five uh, poison stacks here. And uh, gl glowfly and uh, gl both glowfly and graphonics are weak to earth. So, oh no, with the with the use of shadow blast there, shadow storm there, I think, I think you may be onto something. As it does look like that's the out the Joker is playing to here, uh, just sort of trying to hang back, apply those misconditions and try to cheese things out. I say cheese, this is a pretty legit strat in terms of uh, trying to bring things back there. Cause of course that does counterbalance the undodgeable quality of Spark Shower. In and... shield, okay. It looks like Joker is going for a lot of defensive moves. Just... Oh, wow. Yeah. I... No. Never mind. No. Shield the combination burst. of shield burst and those poisons. That's what we were talking about just then. It's happening, but the gift of life happens too, and it's not over yet. Infant stacks, however, are popped on Jagomu's side. This is the only downside of the revives when you get to this point of the game, is that you can chase people out of like the ideal circumstance through that, and you can kind of muscle them out even when they have those revives available. And unfortunately, gift of life being an ultimate, you cannot spam that. So uh, the Jagomu's back, despite a really dominating early game, is against the wall as the shield burst comes out and knocks it down. Yeah, I. I think Jagomo has run out of aces up his sleeve here because I, I'm not sure that Glowfly and uh, uh, gob Goblin... What's his name again? Goblin Hood. <laughs> Goblin Hood can uh, do anything here. 
No, it's looking very rough. And with an absence of combo and with two fewer infinity stacks than the entirety of Joker's team, this is like, we, we, Jagomo doesn't even have damage on his side at this point. Oh man, this is very concerning as the debuffs uh, are going to be taking down the Glowfly before the next coming turn, leaving Goblin Hood with no other source of combo as it's desperately trying to net a kill. But it looks like despite a dominating performance from Jagomu, Joker's going to be running away with this. I, that, yeah, the crazy game there. That was I, a jaw-dropping finale. Pivoting into a shield burst debuff win condition at the end of the game, just trying to use the Shadow Storm as a win condition there. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just it's sp spectacular use of both debuffs and just options on uh, Joker's field here. It can be deceptive watching it in practice, primarily because, of course, um, you do Gorsu. You do naturally run into the circumstance where you just have so much uh, that you need to worry about in terms of uh, just the in initial salvo from Jagomu, but I, I was spellbound by how well Joker was able to roll with those punches in the games where he did wind up succeeding there and turning things around and just dick to his guns. Uh, those, those strong debuffs that we saw again and again and again uh, just take uh, Jagoma's feet out from under him inside those, like, uh, like from mid game to late game, like, consistently there was either, like, uh, snipe him early, uh, get rid of all of the sort of elements that would really be able to sustain into the late game on Joker's side or die to a thousand cuts. But yeah, uh, he just found a strategy game free and just ran with it. Honestly, congratulations to both players for getting this far. Oh, certainly. Uh, really.